Thank you. And Nina Mani. It's uh, lovely to be here on Ghana Country and I'm thrilled that I've got a lectern to lean on because I have had a, quite a ride over the last uh, week. Uh, I was just saying to Amy, one of my co-founders in CoLab for Good, that um, the week heading into the election is going to make a fabulous book, the whole campaign. But the 48 Hours of the Count is a four-part mini-series and um, I've already got people who are offering to do script writing for it. It's um, been quite a thing. So um, Onka Paringa is the women's river. So it's Nanka Paringa in, in Ghana. And um, it's such an honour. I'm their fourth mayor uh, as since they've been a city. And... Um, the river runs into the ocean um, at Port Nolunga, so any of you who've had holidays and things down there. And when it, where the river runs into the ocean is the confluence. It's the place where the water comes in and out. And that's really what impact and change is all about, where we all feed our work and our love and our passions and our commitments through that river all the rivers that run together that eventually end up in the ocean. And so that experience of confluence where the ocean and the river and the sandbars meet is the work, that's the place we all work in. And um, when I was choosing a photograph to run for my campaign, I chose that place. I took a photo at sunset um, up on the little ridge of, at Port Nalunga of that place where the river and the ocean meet and I just want you to find that place in your heart. Where are the, where's the, where are the rivers and where does the ocean meet in your life? Because that's where the, that's the intersection, that's the place the impact takes place. And we don't have the oceans or the rivers without us being there. So Onka Paringa, Nanka Paringa, um, she's a beautiful river and most of you will have some kind of connection with it. You'll know the trees, the great river red gums, and you'll know the watercourses by the fact that some of them are still there and you'll be able to recognise them when you go and buy a beautiful bottle of wine from the McLaren Vale region because it'll be from the ground that the water has been able to um, feed. Um, and some of those red gums are three, four, five hundred years old. They are um, pre-settlement. So I will never be able to forget that I'm on that land and uh, in the spirit of that land will be what will hold me in this role over the next few years and indeed has held me for many years already. So um, I've got two um, SDGs that I'm talking about. I'm part of a, a global women's network of uh, activators working on the world's to-do list. So that's our word our shorthand for the SDGs, and they are the world's to-do list. And that international movement is um, now called Coralus, so coral and then us, but all one word, dot world. If you're not involved in that, if you don't know what those women, female founders all over the world are doing some extraordinary work on the SDGs, um, all sorts of just literally amazing things. Um, we've got um, one of the... the uh, organisations here in our state, um, Sarah Gunn from GoGo Go Events and the GoGo Go Foundation. She was one of the first South Australian activator who, um, whose business was supported by Coralus. Uh, in those days it was CEO, so those of you who might remember it from that. So, um, and Sarah's one of my co-founders with Amy in CoLab for Good and we're really thrilled to be part of tonight because we're up there as a little logo somewhere too and it's startup week too so we know that these are the things that again this is the confluence when people say oh you've got a lot of hats well yeah I guess but you know it's just like drops of water in the river going into the ocean and um why do I stick with one hat right you know I've been wearing lots of wigs and things over the last week or two campaigning uh, any of you who Schitt's Creek fans Moira Rose has been my inspiration uh you can see some fun things on um, uh, on Instagram and Facebook if you want to look them up. Um, but I'll just share a little story about the power of um, 
just remembering all those different things and then I'll um, talk a bit about a few more other bits and pieces. But yesterday, um, when we were in the count for some of the ward councillors, there is a block, there's a block of uh, candidates who are closely associated with the Federation Party, even though they say they're not. Um, for those of you who don't know the Federation Party, they're a neo-Nazi group, um, and their leader only just um, lost out to me. Uh, and um, so every time the scrutineers, their scrutineers, and my or the team of scrutineers we had in Team Democracy. We weren't uh, an affiliated group, but we brought all these people together ye yesterday, particularly. Um, as they were coming out, I would, because I, I had my car still full of all my campaign stuff, I would put something else on my head. So we, over the course of yesterday afternoon, the um, this particular group saw me in my purple wig, my um, giraffe ears, uh, a feather, a bright fit purple feather boa, a butterfly hat, uh, oh, and my purple um, Alice Springs beanie that's got lots of sparkly things on it, sequins. Um, so, of course, I was photographed at every point, documented. Um, so, if you start seeing those on Instagram, can you please tag me in? I don't expect anyone here in the group is part of that community but um, maybe you're on telegram and maybe you get a little bit but I don't want to miss out on how it's being used so I'd love you to tag me in should you see it in the public space um, and impact work needs to be fun as well it's not you know it's hard work so my rule is if we're not having fun we're not doing it properly so um, expect to see some more Moira Rose inspired things from me. And I'm wearing my SDG dress, not, not my STD dress, which is what somebody thought recently. Um, and I wear this because it's got all the colours of the SDGs. And um, as a way of just signalling and reminding all of us and reminding me, because I will forget. So um, just a little shout out to uh, props like your clothes and the things that you do and the things that you wear uh, and the way that you live in the world are great ways of signalling to people what you believe in. And we all know that, but we can always do more. We can always have a fun thing. On my jacket, which is sitting down there, um, last year I started wearing uh, lots of different badges on it because I'd been to an event where there was a, an abundance, shall we say, of men who were wearing lots of medals. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to just change that up a bit. So I've got lots of things on there as well. So I'm, and I can tell that story another day. But if you do see me in my jacket, ask me, oh, what's that badge for? Or where did you get that from? And um, it's a lot of fun. And I encourage you all to do that too. So the two um, SDGs are there for me, uh, gender equality and reduced inequities. And I'm going to um, start uh, the gender equality bit by just giving you a poem. It's my patriarchal panic rap. And um, yes, you can all enjoy it already. I, now, Mick gave you some very clear directions about applause and cheering. Now, if those of you who go to poetry slams and things like that, this is the, the technique. Can I just, pra can you all practice? Do you know how to do? So if you think it's pretty good, you go really fast, Anna. Now, this is my arthritic hand on this side. I can't even do it anything anymore. Um, and if, you know, and if you think it's really good, like you do lots of them and that's, that's called feedback to the poet, all right? So then we know that you're really getting something out of it. So um, just settle in. And if there's something that really resonates with you, and I'm just looking at the women in the room, um, it's absolutely fine to laugh um, and loud is fine. But, you know, let's just practice being good slam poetry audience. So this patriarchal panic was, even though it's me that's reading it and I'm going to say, I can't, I honestly can hardly remember my name today. So I, that's why I asked for the lectern and why I'm going to read it. Normally I would know it off by heart. Um, but it's, um, it was inspired by Amy, Sarah and I regularly catch up and 
One of the things we do is we share the experience that we've had of being told interesting things by a particular, sorry gentlemen, a particular gender. Uh, we, we almost you know, have to stop the agenda so that we've got time to talk about other things uh, some days. And even this very day in my own life, um, the lobbying for who wants to be deputy mayor has started. And you can probably guess that the idea of a deputy should be someone who looks a bit like the person they're deputising for. Just to say that the person who's putting a lot of effort into that is different in every way to me. So the patriarchal panic. Patriarchal panic turns up under every rock. And every nook and every cranny, it starts with a snort and a gasp and a gulp from blokes with names like, you know, Dick. Tom or Harry or David or Andrew or Stephen with hands on the levers, sometimes very small, the hands that is, not the levers, uh, from egos pissing up against the wall. And then there's the women who cry, oh, what about the men? Seriously, sisters, it's not a matter of why but when. And once the snort, the gulp and the gasp disappear, be alert for the sounds, the next sounds that you might hear. It'll come with a rush or a gentle breeze to caress your ear. Let me explain this to you, my dear. Justifications, obfuscations, expectations, connotations, confrontations, explanations, commiserations, machinations, lamentations, limitations, simulations, complications accusations. Oh, it's not the right time. Oh, take your time. Stay in line. Oh, you'll be fine. And not your time to shine. You need to pine. No need to pine. Have another sip of wine. Feminism's on the decline. But your smile, oh, <laughs> that's so divine. A monstrous panic attack is present in the press long before Murdoch, far back as Exodus. It was Miriam with the tambourine to cross the Red Sea first. Brother Moses took her lead to escape old Pharaoh's curse. The lies of biblical proportions that push the panic button. The wolves in sheep clothing, like Mr Potato Head. Oh, sorry, 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 um, Ms. Peter Dutton. Um, if you want to be on track to avoid a full-blown panic attack, here's a recipe I've prepared for you to take your place in this coup. So replace your specs with a gender lens. Move half your super to get the equal spend. In order to avoid charity, add 17 cents in the dollar to get wage parity. Make room in your house for domestic bliss. Put love and kindness in the mix. Invest in female founders and your stocks will rise. We've got to, we're going to need another 47% from our bro allies. Step away from the podium if you want to speak. Manuals are intoxicating for pale, stale antiques. Take a breath, give a sigh. Don't relax. It's goodbye. For the patriarchal panic is coming to its end. Let's race towards the future and see this movement trend. <laughs> Thank you. So the patriarchal panic is very linked to the work um, I do in the Hen House. Uh, so I'm the founder of the Hen House Co-op and um, we are closing the gender investment gap. That's our goal. Uh, we're doing it through advocacy and through um, solidarity with others and making visible what needs to change. So we're not investors. We're not people who are... Um, always you know in the front line for policy work but we are definitely working on that so if any of you want to join the hen house co-op it's henhouse.coop and it is a co-op for a good reason so cooperatives were the first um, business model where women were equal to men and in fact women in the UK when co-ops began had the vote as equal business partners and equal members 17 years long before franchise so it's a really, um, co-ops are an important part of impact. And all around the world, in many of those examples, we saw that beautiful slide, lots and lots of co-ops exist. 
I am a co-op fanatic. I really believe that co-ops are an important business model and they're ones that uh, can and will change the world and they have already. So most of us are in co-ops. We don't always know if we're in a co-op or a mutual. If you're in the RAA, there's straight away, we've got Angela here so she can <laughs> promote that. That is South Australia's largest uh, mutual and co-op. So uh, please support that. Um, so I wanted to just finish with a little uh, couple more things. And that is that um, with, the, with gender equality, equality is not going to be enough actually. It needs to be equity. So that means we need to raise people up to meet that that, that gap and that means some people are going to have to step out of the way just like the blokes will need to step off the panels those panels that are all men um that we might need to move our space as well and make room for other people whose voices aren't heard people young people people with disabilities first nations people people who have lived experience whatever it is so the privileged ones like me need to move away too and uh that's a big challenge for all of us in the impact work and that's the challenge i'd love you to to take away with you, to really grapple. When you get asked to do something, is there someone else you can put forward? Is there someone else that you can bring in to broaden the group? Um, and gradually, in fact, I was talking to Emily about this at least earlier today. Um, so you can make a really good start doing it that way. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say is that the work that we do in, um, in CoLab for Good is really about being an intermediary, so helping build the capacity of these things. So, so if you haven't got equity, if you're dealing with all the reduced inequalities, you have to do some capacity building. Um, and we need friends and allies in all of that work. And we need to be each other's friends and allies. This is not a competitive space. This is a collaborative space. So how can you, that's the, my next question for you to take home for yourself about the impact work is what can you do? How can you increase your impact by collaborating with someone? Not competing, but how, what is it that you might need to do? And it's not just partnering. Collaboration is far deeper, more respectful, harder, uh, more compassionate. So think about what collaboration actually means and what it is that you can do to do that together. So that's going to be me because I can see Mick coming up. But I wanted to finish with another poem because, you know, I can't help myself. This one's not mine. This is by my favourite living poet. So any of you who know me and have heard me before will know that I adore David White, W-H-Y-T-E. And uh, this poem, as you can see, I was torn off my, my wall today. I thought, oh, I'll just grab that as I'm going out the door. Um, and it's, it, is, it has served me really well. And in the impact work, we need to have heart. We need to nurture ourselves and support ourselves. Um, poetry and singing are the things that I do to do that. You can see I'm not working out of the gym every day, but these are the things that help me stay on track and nurture me. And this particular poem, Sweet Darkness, was something that, uh, a poem that really hung on to uh, during the COVID, our COVID time. Uh, and I'll just read it, it's not long. Um, when your eyes are tired, the world is tired also. When your vision has gone, no part of the world can find you. Time to go into the dark where the night has eyes to recognise its own. There you can be sure you are not beyond love. The dark will be your home tonight. The night will give you a horizon further than you can see. You must learn one thing. You must learn one thing. The world was made to be free in. Give up on all the other worlds except the one to which you belong. Sometimes it takes darkness and the sweet confinement of your aloneness to learn. Anything or anyone, so anything or anyone that does not bring you alive is too small for you. Thank you.